All right, guys, welcome to this morning's um, Rising Stars call. I'm going to be your host for Miss Melanie Mitro. My name is Kristen Richards, and I'm a 29-year-old from Fredericksburg, Virginia. I have two boys, ages eight and four. I just dropped off my son for his very first day of third grade, so it was a little sad. Um, but I was really excited um, to be able to do this call for you. Um, Melanie asked me uh, last week, I think, to do it for you all, and I was really excited, and I automatically said yes, but then all of a sudden, I kind of had that um, post-experience moment of, oh my gosh, do you think that I'm good enough to, <laughs> to do this at all? So um, I went ahead and just, you know, was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and plan this for you. So my theme for this call is going to be um, my journey as a coach when I started and how I made the mindset shift from a hobby coach to a working coach. I am started as a coach in October of 2013. I came into this business really excited, and I'll talk more about that when I get into it. But as of right now, I am a five-star qualifying coach. I'm a diamond in my second business center. Um, I am a success club all-star, and I ended 2014 as a premier coach. So that was my pretty much my first year um, as a coach, and this year I changed up my game plan. I made a lot of um, errors in my first year, and I'm going to talk to you. I'm really good, and I really like sharing my failures because for me, that's how I that's how I learn. I learn the hard way, and I, I want to learn and, and teach, and I want to share because I hope that you guys can take some things away that are going to help you propel in your business. You know, we can hear people tell you the same thing over and over again, but I hope that something sparks a fire in your belly or you get an aha moment or you kind of just have this realization with yourself to say, okay, I, I'm going to do this and I'm, I'm going to listen and I'm going to go all in like she does. Because here's the catch, guys. Um, I still work as a labor and delivery nurse. So I have built my business around a full-time job. Blows people's mind why I would do that. Um, but that is, that's what I've done. I only know how to be busy and I only know how to manage my time correctly. So, um, you guys, if you're coming on, can you please mute your audio for me? Thank you. Um, and so, I had to get really diligent with my time management. So even though I'm going to share my coaching journey with you, I'm going to seal up the call with giving you some really good tips for time management because I know that that's a big thing for everyone, and that's something that I'm really good about teaching on. So um, I'm going to start off by saying I am just so honored that you all have showed up for this call to, to hear me. Um, you know, Melanie has really created a culture for um, whether you're a brand new diamond, congratulations. If you are a diamond who's growing and you're kind of shaky where you kind of lose rank and then you pick it up, if that's you. Um, if you are somebody who has kind of mastered the skill of diamond and now you're growing an organization, it, it, wherever you are at in your business, the beauty of this group and why I, I strongly urge you to utilize it is because you have people from all different walks of life, all different stages in their business, and we can all learn from somebody in that spot. We can all share things that are helping us and things that may not have helped. And so I encourage you firsthand, if you are somebody who is really shy but you have a question, I want you to utilize this group as a resource because that is one thing that has really helped me in my business. And if you guys have questions along the way with during my call, go ahead and write it in the chat box because I really want this to be interactive. I want you to be able to feel comfortable enough to ask me questions and to hopefully help you um, get going with your business. So let me go ahead and pull up my notes. So I started Beachbody in October 2013. I came into this business. Um, I had never done a Beachbody program. I had never drank Shakeology. 
I was attracted to the coaching lifestyle. And what attracted me to the coaching lifestyle was I had had a transformation after my second son. I learned about clean eating. It was a rough road. I was drinking a superfood blend. I had all these great things. I, I knew what to do. It was hard. But I got there. I was always the cheerleader of my unit saying, come on, guys, let's go to the gym. Let's, um, you know, let me write a meal plan for you. Let's do this together. So I was always really good at offering free advice and getting people on board. So I think when I talk to my coaches of how I started, I always want them to kind of think about, you know, what free advice can you give? What things can you offer? How are you helping people? Because that will attract people. You want to always give more of yourself before expecting anything from anyone else. So for me, I was constantly out there wanting to share, wanting to get people on board. I was passionate about um, a clean eating lifestyle and I was going to start a blog. I was really yeah. excited. Um, and what had happened was I had had a very severe family tragedy in 2013, um, which is a big part of my why I had, um, what had happened was my grandfather who raised me um, had a massive heart attack while on a ski trip in front of my six, well, he was six at the time. Um, and it devastated our family. I had an identity crisis. I didn't know who I was anymore. I was severely depressed. I'm talking like anybody that knows me will tell you, I am just the most positive and upbeat girl, but I was lost at that time in my life. And I was laying in bed one day and I got a random friend request from this girl in New Jersey and had no idea who she was. We had one mutual friend and she sat in my box for about two months. I'm like, I don't know you. I have no idea who you are. I'm not accepting your friend, requ friend request, but her profile was public. So I got to see what she was doing. I got to see her working out with her kids. I got her, to, you know, seeing her with her super food, food drink. And I, those were things that I'm like, I used to do this. I remember this life. And I kept watching her. And so one, the, 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 the upper right hook that got me, and this is going to be so funny to you guys, it was a team cup challenge. And she had a flyer of all these happy faces, of all these married, this married, these married couples. And here I was on the verge of divorce, losing my kids, losing my job, losing everything in my life. And I came across that flyer and I said, I want to be happy like that again. I, I don't know what she's doing, but I want to be like that. So I messaged her. I said, hey, what are you doing? She called me, okay, a complete stranger about the coaching opportunity. My upline coach is Kaylee Hennessy. She is probably one of the most fearless little, like, fearless girls you will ever meet. She's super, super, super shy, but she loves this business. She loves being able to share the, the business opportunity. So when you guys are out there thinking, I don't want to friend request strangers. I don't know them. I don't want to, I don't want to get on a phone call with somebody and talk to them about the business opportunity. Guess what? She had no idea that she was going to sign a rock star at that time in her life. Maybe it was luck. Maybe it was divine intervention. Whatever you want to call it, it saved my life. And people that know me will tell you that that's what did it for them. So when I talk to my coaches about that, I always say, you know, what would it mean to you knowing that you have the power to save somebody's life with this opportunity? What would that mean to you guys? Would you be scared to share? Would you be scared to reach out to somebody? Would you be scared to offer free help? If you truly believe in the passion, if you truly believe in the business opportunity and what this business can do for you. So I signed up. I think my first month as a coach, I hit Success Club 32. Um, again, never did a program, never did Shakeology, just researched it and really believed in the company. Um, was recruiting everybody I could think of. Two weeks into my business, because they saw that, I was invited to a retreat with Melanie. And I got to meet a lot of the girls that you see. And I was just like, this is real. Like, wow, Alyssa Shoemaker was like, so when are you going to quit your job as a nurse? Two weeks into my business, I was like, Psh, you're crazy. Like, this is not real. This is just a hobby. You know, I'm having fun. I get to start challenge groups. But that retreat made me leave it, leave there just with like, I could actually do this. And I was so confident. I went diamond in 25 days. 
I became a star diamond in six months. I had all this momentum and I was going and I was just really happy and excited. But then guess what happened? I got my confidence. Went like this. And I compare it to almost as a baby when you're born. I refer everything to breastfeeding baby. Sorry, guys. But as a baby, you're born and you're so innocent to this world. And then you have factors and influences that start to um, – play into where you were at in your coaching journey. So for me, it was going from that to having influences from um, an unsus unsupportive spouse who didn't like me spending a lot of time on my business. I was getting backlash from my unit. I had people returning their Shakeology. I had customers unsatisfied with customer service. I had, um, my family wasn't being supportive. People were telling me I was annoying them on Facebook. Um, anything that you can think of, the negative Nancys are what started to tear apart my confidence. And the thing is, is I allowed that to happen. So coming into this, if you guys are affected by negativity and you let that happen to your confidence, it, it shows in your business, it shows in your team, and that's something that I urge you guys, please, if you are in that route or um, in that rut, per se, of losing your confidence and losing your steam, even though you're really excited, make yourself strong. Surround yourself with people that are doing this with you. That's what this team is for. That's the culture of this team. For you to say, I have people that support me and, and love what I'm doing. I know that I'm doing a good job, and I know that I'm saving lives. I know that I have a success partner that I can reach out to and vent to and I can make plans with and I can make strategies and I know personal development, it's a skill that I need to learn. It's something that I need to learn. So even though I had all this instant, you know, growing awesome success, I, sh I was not developing into the leader that I am now and that's something that 100% full accountability that I can say for myself. With each body, you're going to fail so many times. You have to do self-evaluation on a daily to say, what am I doing? What were my goals? Where was I able to accomplish it? And what is going to happen in my future for me to change this course of action? So I continued down my journey. Um, the next retreat um, was in April of last year. I was like, okay. This retreat changed my life when it was my first, in my first uh, retreat that I had done two weeks into my business. I knew what it did for me. So I was like, come on, guys. Who wants to go with me? This is a great opportunity. We get to be with the number one coach in the network. This is going to change your business. Like, I had been there. So I knew what it was going to do. And I was going to get as many coaches as possible there. But the requirement was is they had to push for diamond. So I got two girls to diamond. One went, and then the other one quit her business a week before the retreat. It was like, what? You know, you're like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Never got an explanation. Another blast to my ego, right? It's like so discouraging. But I went to that retreat, and I got, again, some amazing training. Leanne Ruff, um, she's no longer with Beachbody, but a couple of things that she said to me that I really took away was, I was trying to learn and understand everything. I wanted to have systems and I wanted to have processes. And I was so busy trying to learn everything that I wasn't actually implementing action steps. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. The next step that happened, um, the diamond that I'm talking about, she's actually one of my best friends. Um, and she was my, my little um, success business partner, Bianca O'Brien. Um, she was one of those coaches that kind of was a discount and built to working. And then she decided to go to Summit in Vegas. Um, we couldn't afford to go to Summit. Actually, um, we had been in a lot of debt from my grandfather's death. That when we had gone, when we flew out to Vegas, we actually shared a hotel room. I mean, that was what we had to do. That was the sacrifice that we had to, to make to get there. We had to make sure that we were budgeting our food. We had to use um, bonus money that my husband had received for our plane tickets. I mean, big sacrifices to get out to Vegas for, for Coach Summit. 
Um, and when we came back a week later, it was Super Saturday. So I missed my son's soccer game. So not only did were we gone away from our kids, but then we missed his soccer game on top of the weekends that I missed on the retreat. I will see so many women that will post, sorry, you know, I can't, I have this over and over and over again. And that was another thing that used to bother me is like, why, if you tell me you really want this business, why am I making sacrifices and why am I doing these things? And I'm taking time away from my family right now because I really want this. And I tell people, I'm like, if you really want this, you have to start making some sacrifices in your, in your business, whether it's start, you know, not big ones, but like small, like if that means not watching TV, if that means setting strict business hours where you make sure that you're spending family time, what are you willing to sacrifice in your business right now to get to where, like today, I got to drop my son off at his private school, tuition that two years ago, no way would be able to afford. I got to write a check a couple days ago for his tuition. That is the most important thing to me is to carry on my grandfather's what he wanted for my son. And I'm telling you, those small sacrifices are what landed me here to be able not only to speak to you on my son's very first day of school, but to also share with you that I am able to financially afford that school because of Beachbody. When before a year ago, it wouldn't have happened. So if I hadn't made those sacrifices at that time in my business, would I be where I'm at now? I'm not really sure, but I had to be willing to put myself out there and I had to be willing to at least try. So I did. So the next thing that had happened was Bianca came back from Summit she was all excited, like, woohoo, I'm ready to do beach body. I'm like, thank you, Lord. I have somebody that's excited and wants to do this with me. It was one person. I had one working coach. I had some other coaches that would hit Success Club here and there. I was really trying to create a team culture. I didn't, I was trying so hard, trying to get people engaged, trying to get people on top of these challenge groups. I went to premiere strictly on discount coaches and hitting Success Club 10 every month in my business and starting to try to learn to get people attracted to this. I couldn't figure it out because, again, I was busy, but I was trying and I was failing. So I ended premiere 2014. I was then invited to L.A. All, all my hotel, everything paid for. That unsupportive hater, hey, uh, my hater, I call him, my husband, we went to L.A. That is when I changed my mindset from going from a hobby coach, which is what I pretty much thought I was my first year, to a full-blown working coach. It was L.A. L.A. So retreat got me in. Getting my coaches to a retreat and creating that vision for them got them in. Getting them to summit. We made a goal of bringing 30 coaches to Nashville with us. We set goals for next year. We set goals for Nashville next year. Getting our leaders there, getting our team there, getting, I had a brand new coach come to Nashville this year, leaving her little baby at home. Brand new coach, because she wants us so bad, and hearing from what had happened with me. Getting them to Super Saturdays, getting them to events, getting them to where now, Guess what? My number one focus is getting my coaches to LA because that was a game changer for me. Why was it a game changer for me? Well, first of all, I got to sit in a room with about 200 other coaches. I got to um, stay in a really nice hotel with my husband. Um, I got to be in a room with Carl Deichler. It was so intimate, almost like he was just talking to me. And he shared the vision with Beachbody. Did you know that it started with 40 people in a room and Carl Deichler trying to share um, with us on this opportunity where people kind of looked at him and laughed? Could you imagine years ago being in a room as one of the 40 people, one of the founding coaches, and somebody saying, hey, guys, we have a really good uh, uh, launch. We're a direct sales company, but we're going to switch to multi-level marketing, and we don't, really, we don't really know what we're doing, but we're asking you to believe in us. It's like me with my business. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what, where it's going to go. I don't know if it's going to work, but I have faith 
and I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to give it my all and I'm going to try and I'm going to tell myself it's okay if I'm, if I'm not doing the things that I want to do. It's okay if somebody else is moving faster or moving, you know, the comparing games. It's okay because this is my business the same way it's your business. And now Carl is telling me that they lost millions of dollars <laughs> trying to figure this out. They are constantly behind the scenes working to try to create training, to try to create um, field development for us. I got to go to headquarters and I got to see how they even started in a small one level office space. And when they grew, they got to add to, top, to the top of it. They got to add the gyms. They got to add the, the, the trainers. They got to add all these programs. So you really have a feeling of what they're doing. You really believe in their vision and in the, in the culture. You can't go anywhere in the Team Beachbody headquarters. There's a mission statement at the top of the buildings where you have to give high fives. If you're passing somebody, you have to give a high five. You know, like, wouldn't you want to work for Beachbody? It'd be the coolest job. To me, it would. So for me to see that, I was like, Melanie was right. All of these leaders are right. This company is for real. I get it now. Like, I, I validated that to myself. I got to listen to some amazing speakers. And the one thing um, that when I started, um, the one thing that I took that was like my aha moment in LA, I was sitting next to people at breakfast and talking to them. What attracted you to this business? The number one thing that I heard was the business opportunity. The business opportunity. Well, that wasn't my, what attracted me to it, but that was the number one thing. I'm talking people who are so um, struggling financially and the demographics that it made me feel, I felt guilty because I wasn't sharing this opportunity. But these people somehow found it and now they were changing their lives. They were getting out of poverty because of Beachbody. That struck a huge chord in me. These people were willing to do that. And guess what? A lot of them, they didn't have enough line. They didn't have people telling them what to do. They had to figure it out. And here I am complaining and telling myself, oh, things aren't going for me. Woe is me. I went to my hotel room crying to my husband because I felt like I didn't belong when I was in LA. I felt like I didn't belong there at one point. And he told me to get my butt back out there and <laughs> to not be that person, to stop, to stop it is what he told me. And then I got to go out and I got to hear stories like that. Had I never asked, had I, had I never engaged with these people, I never would have been able to take that special moment back with me. So when in LA, you kind of take on the acting role, I guess is what you want to say. And on the plane ride home, I wrote in my pink notebook, which is, which is not in my possession right now, but I wrote in my pink notebook that Beachbody was going to be my career. It was going to be my career from now on. Even though I had a job, I pretended like I just got fired, and I pretended like I had to use Beachbody to feed my children. I went to that level. I went to that mindset. It's a little scary to think about. But I said, you know what? I have to make this work. I need to... I need to not only help people transform their lives, but I need to find people who need the financial support from Beachbody that they have to offer. This is huge. This is huge. Huge. We are in a struggling, in a struggling country right now, and we have that power to share and to help people create financial freedom for their families. Even if you don't need it, or even if an extra $200 a month means nothing to you, that could mean the world of difference to somebody else. So I was really pumped and I was excited. Um, the things that I took from LA that I got from the leaders that have helped me dramatically, write these down because they, they do. Um, the first one is Entre Leadership. Um, I think I'm saying that right, from Dave Ramsey. And then the next one is the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership from John Maxwell. I read those on the plane ride home. And then the um, call that Melanie had done um, for LA was marketing, uh, your monthly marketing strategy. So what does that monthly strategy look like for me in my, op in my business? Well, what we did was I sat down with my calendar which looks like this, okay? 
I have, because I'm a working coach, I have a mobile office. It's my book bag. It goes everywhere with me. This does not leave my possession. And what I did was I took and I said, okay, I'm going elite this year. There's no way around it. I'm going elite. And I set up exactly the dates of what was going to happen. So January 9th was my coach basics group. I sent all my brand new coaches just a little handwritten letter saying, I'm so excited for you to start. Um, and we got them going with that. Well, how did we recruit them for that coach basics? We went back, Bianca and I, we went back up our past year of all of our past challengers. We went through that list and we followed up trying to get people um, the, that would want to be involved in the coaching opportunity. You know, there's three ways of what attracts people to the coaching opportunity. One, challengers converted to coaches. It's like the easiest thing. I thought that was the only way I would ever get rock star coaches. That is false. The second one, people are attracted to the coaching lifestyle. They like to see people part of groups. They like to see um, people going on trips. They like to see people going on retreats. Super Saturdays, take pictures. That's why we do it, guys. People are attracted to that. They're like, well, if they're doing a big old group exercise together, why can't I be part of that? Um, all of the things that you think would be silly to post, I want you to start posting about it because people are watching and you don't really know who's watching and what picture a team cup flyer is what attracted me to my coach. So you never know. That's why we do these things and that's why we work together as a team. The third one is the business opportunity. People don't know, people will come into this just because they want and they like the financial opportunity. But of course, they have to enjoy helping people and they have to want to change their health and fitness. Well, guess what? Everybody needs health. No matter what age, no matter where you're at in your fitness journey, everybody needs good health. Everybody can benefit from Beachbody. As a nurse, I will stand on a soapbox and I will tell you, I can find a program, I can find a system for about anybody here that are around me, but it's up to them and it's up for me to show them the value within themselves and to show them that they can make a difference because I believe in them. But it's just getting out there and talking and sharing and all of these vital behaviors that we're telling you and that we are supposed to be doing. So... Self-evaluation time, if you go onto your timeline right now, if somebody were to come across that, would they know that you are a coach? Would they know that you run challenge groups? Would they know that you're coaching and you're starting to develop, a, you know, if you're leading a team? Do you have a team culture? Are you, you know, are you doing that? Because if you look at my timeline, it's almost like I'm using it as a coach sneak peek. I talk about the things that Beachbody is allowing me to do and to have. A year ago, guys, I didn't do that because I didn't think that I was good enough. I didn't think that I had enough legit monetary value or I didn't have a lot of these things to share. I could, last year, I could have paid a cell phone bill in a month with Beachbody. That's huge. To me, it wasn't a big deal. I could have paid my mortgage in a month with Beachbody. Again, not a big deal because here I am comparing myself to all these five and ten star diamonds that I had not developed into yet. I was comparing myself. So do you see like it was that mindset of I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think that my small successes mattered. Your small successes matter. Your team, your coaches, if they sell one challenge pack, that's a huge success for them. So for me, knowing that, I'm a huge at shouting out and giving recognition. I really wanted to get them. So what I did, and with the, back to the monthly marketing um, strategy, is every month we have a coach basics. And then the third week of every month, we are recruiting and helping our new baby coaches get new challengers. And we say, okay, guys, this is the day we're going to start preseason. We are going to help you and go through a coach um, challenge group with you. We set up a tiny group message box where the new coaches can ask questions while they are participating in the new challenge group with their people. So we have started a coach basics. We've set goals with them, and now we're helping them to get challengers for the third week of the month. And 
it that is a system that we've been doing since January. Um, the so the first of January, January twenty third through January twenty seventh. It's five days. We have a five day coach sneak peek that we run every single month for our team. I use my upline script, and then I made once I got comfortable with running one by myself. I had my uprising leaders do videos, and we started doing that. So then the goal is getting new people in, that are interested in the coaching opportunity. We're taking on the brunt work until they develop into the leaders where they can run their own. So it's all a big ecosystem. And this is stuff that Melanie and everyone has told me. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea, but I didn't actually implement it. I didn't actually take the steps to get there. Um, and then having a coaching opportunity call once a month. So if you are somebody who is wanting to grow an organization and grow a business, I want you to ask a couple of things. Do you have a coach basics group that you run monthly? Do you run a coach sneak peek that you have monthly? Do you have a business opportunity call that you run monthly? If you don't, that's something that I highly encourage you to think about. Now, the next point that I had from LA, which was kind of hard, I called my coach. I said, you know, I love you. I love everything that you've done and you've taught me. But if I'm going to do this business and I'm going to end the year in the top 200 because that's my goal that I set in January and I'm going to be an elite coach, I have to create my own team page. I cannot add anymore. I am asking you that it has nothing to do with you and your leadership. It's just I have to do this for me. So I did that. I don't add anybody to my uplines pages. Now, if I do sign a new coach, um, Bianca and I will tell them, you know, we, ha we come from the number one coach in the network. I have an amazing upline coach who's underneath of her. They each have team pages. They each have team calls. If you at any point would like to be added to those, you have full permission to. You just let me know, and then I will add them. But, you know, it, it's kind of saying, all right, I'm going to do this, and now I'm going to create this, this team page. Now you're like, what am I going to do? Well, you have to set the team culture. When are your team calls going to be? Mine are Wednesdays at 9 o'clock every single week. Melanie spoke on a call. I asked her, I said, how much time do you spend planning those team calls? And she says that she blocks out a three-hour window. I'm like, three-hour window? That's crazy. What are, you, what are you planning for three hours? Well, I started doing that. I started making PowerPoints for my teams. Even though nobody showed up, I still hit record and I use that as practice rounds for the training that I wanted to give in the future. I didn't give up. I stayed consistent. Um, we would have, we tried everything. We would have um, guest speakers, but now my team calls, I had to pay to upgrade on Zoom because <laughs> they get maxed out. So it's that amazing compound effect playing in and here I am developing into this leader and having this confidence to go full throttle when before, a year ago, I never would have done that. So get your calendars out. Make a plan for you guys. If you are not comfortable or confident enough to take that next leap or to step into that leadership role, then what do you need to do right now to get there? What do you need to start doing to get to that point? Because my goal now with my, because I know what it did for me, my goal is to get my leaders to a point where they break off and they start doing their own thing and they start speaking to their niche. And it's not like, oh, I'm cutting you off and you're leaving the nest. It's because I know that we speak to different people. We all can't speak to the same person. Not everybody, you know, it's going to like that, but getting them confident to build and now now I have star diamonds rising in my organization. So that is so amazing to me because it all started with my mistakes and my failures and what it took to get to the point that I am now and working together with a success partner and failing over and over again and, and just putting my blinders on and not looking at anybody else and what they're doing and just doing my thing my thing and creating value on my team page. Um, so that is pretty much what I did. 
If you guys want on my YouTube channel, there's the call that Melanie did that I'm talking about from LA with the marketing strategy. So come back from LA. I set monthly goals for elite. If you guys are pushing for that, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to touch too much into that, but I did set goals of getting at least 10 coaches to success club a month. Um, that's the foundation of our business. That's what helped me. I hit success club 10 non-negotiable every single month. Like that's it. It's, it's on like Donkey Kong. The first three, the first three weeks, if I don't have success club 10 by then, then I didn't push hard enough. And then next month I need to, to check myself and reevaluate and make sure that I'm spreading my time the way that I need to. So now you guys are probably thinking, okay, that's fine. That's great. But how does she get it done? On days that I work at the hospital, I work 12 hour shifts. I, for a full-time nurse, it's usually three shifts a week. Our unit has been so short. Um, we have had a hard time reaching, um, keeping nurses that I feel obligated to my community. That's why I haven't left yet. Um, so I was working anywhere from four shifts a week on call, getting sporadic. I have kids. I have a family that I have to feed. I have to meal prep. I have to exercise. I have to do personal development. I have to run team calls. Run. So you see, you're kind of like, oh, it's just so overwhelming. It's really not when you break it down. 30-day push from Shalene Johnson, guys. That is amazing. It's for, you can even sign up for the emails for free. Get the book. Take these big, scary goals and break them down to weekly goals or into daily goals. She compares something to, like, my garage. My garage is a mess. The thought of cleaning it, I don't even know where to start. But I already made a schedule. Monday's going to be sorting day. Tuesday, I'm going to start taking stuff to donate. There's, you know, I, I started breaking it up to where... By the time I go to do it, it's not overwhelming, and I've already made a plan to getting it done. So the Shaleen push and reverse engineering your goals, for us, it was um, getting, getting what we needed to do in our business while having a life. So for the days that I was at the hospital, what we started doing was we woke up at 5 a.m. I think Bianca wakes up at 4 a.m., and she just had – she has a – nine or 10 month old now, a three year old and a teenager. So we said, okay, we, we have to do this. We have to switch our mind, our mind shift with this. So we wake up early before our kids and we work out. We check in with all of our challenge groups. We check in with our team page, get that going. And then we have a morning post on Facebook. Slam bam. Thank you, ma'am. My coaches who are like, well, I just don't have time to post in the morning, the night before, before you go to bed in the notes, Type up your post, type up an image so that in the morning, sometimes that's what I have to do. This is probably TMI, but when I am up in the morning and I am peeing, I am posting. <laughs> like, that is how I get it done. That is the only way I can get it done. And then I get ready for work and then I'm off. My lunch break, I go into a quiet room. It is not gossip hour for me. It is I'm getting my 30 minutes of whatever I need to get done right then and there, whether it's a coach call, whether it's checking in with my groups, whether it's posting, you know, a quick meal recipe. And then I come home late at night, same thing, um, planning your schedule out. So if you don't have a consistent schedule for the day, then that is going to be the next step that you guys need to focus on. What daily tasks do I need to do? And do I have a power hour? Am I using my time? I don't have time to sit and message people all day. I don't. But I do have time for attraction marketing. I do have time for that. I do have time to sit there and make out valuable posts that will attract people to me. And I can make videos. And I can put myself out there because that, that is getting exposure. I have time to go to community events and to do vendor fairs and to talk about Beachbody wherever I go. I can put a sticker on my car and drive around town and I can talk to people at Chick-fil-A because I'm a busy mom. I'm a busy mom. I have to talk to people. This is my business. I wish I could stay home and message people all day, but I don't. So if you have that luxury, do it. <laughs> it's a great thing to have. But getting people, seeing you as the leader, 
seeing you as the, the, the key figure in your town, those are also things that have helped me. Building and working with your local coaches can really help. Um, getting part of a, a council, so for Super Saturdays, or hosting your own Super Saturday. That's on my next to-do list. Um, you know, think of things that will really help you and push you outside of your comfort level, but also will get you to be seen as the centerpiece for your business. Um, do you guys have any questions so far? Oh my gosh, they're funny. Anyone? Okay, so here is where I like to, and I do this with my team, and they know that I do this as well. I want you guys right now to list, like, the number one problem in your business in the chat box. Like, what is the one thing that is just, like, eating you away where you can't sleep at night and you're not doing? Anybody brave enough to share? Recruiting. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with Melinda. So recruiting as for challengers or for the coaching opportunity or both coaches? Melinda, are you, are you sharing the coaching opportunity or do you have a coach sneak peek that you run monthly or a business opportunity call? Let me just do it this way. Um, yeah. So I do um, have a coach basics every month. I do um, sporadically have the business opportunity call. I, I, I offer it every month. I don't always host it every month. Sometimes I just um, send people to Melanie's calls, which I know is really shitty at this level. Should not be doing that. But um, at least I'm doing something. So <laughs> yeah. I do, you know, I do need to step up and own that. Um, but I do, I do do my own sneak peeks every month. I do do my own coach basics every month and it has been picking up. Like, um, I think last month I got four coaches out of my sneak peek this month. I have three. So, you know, it's, it's becoming more consistent and I do it whether I get any coaches or no coaches, but, um, I just, like you were just saying about your wall and, um, you know, people need to know when they go to your wall. I don't think I'm doing a good enough job, you know, sharing about the coaching opportunity on my wall. I mean, people know I have kids and I work out and that kind of stuff, but I need to do more on the coaching opportunity. Right. So today I would just sit down and make a plan and say, you know what, Monday is going to be motivation Monday, but at the end I'm going to talk about, I don't know, something else or Tuesday, thankful Tuesday. Um, you can say today I'm thanking Beachbody because I get to stay home with my kids or, you know, I get to have freedom to do what I want or I get to pay for this. You know, I get to pay for my cell phone today um, or thankful Thursday. So think of those things like make a plan where you set up the theme for each day that you post um, Monday. Monday and Tuesday are pretty really good days to post in Facebook land for me. Um, after Wednesday is not really a good day. Thursday is okay. Um, and then the, I don't really talk much about it on the weekends unless it's Sunday night. Sunday night is like my right upper hook. You guys will always see an invite for me on Sunday night. So if you have a plan, so the third week, of, the third week of the month, that five days, Linda, is when we do our coach open house. So that Sunday, I'll say, all right, guys, tomorrow is open house. We're going to talk about it. Like, you guys can go on my timeline, and you can look at the, the one I did recently. I did a family post of how our family has gotten out of debt and what it's doing for us. So just constantly brainstorm and sit down and say, okay, I have to do this. You just told me I have to do this. I need to step into that role. That was me where I said, I need to do that, but I'm not doing it. Why am I not doing it? What, what do I need to do? And I'm, it, it, it was me sitting down with this binder and writing out the dates. This is the date that I will do this. This is when we're going to do this. And also letting my team know, reminding them, hey, guys, there's a coach sneak peek coming up. Let them know that, you know, the top two people with engagement, they get prizes from me. I send a $5 gift certificate from Starbucks, and it's a thanks a latte for participating in our group. People love that. Or if you have, like, a bonus CD, you know, it's okay. You know, we, we are a team that likes to reward people for engaging and for hard work. Um, those groups, 
it takes the burden off of my coaches when they're trying to learn and develop in the leaders to helping them, but giving them tools along the way, like, all right, what are you doing with the game plan for them? What's your business strategy? What are you doing with them? Like that kind of stuff excites me because I get excited. If they're like my babies. Like I'm like, yeah, you know, what are you doing and how are you doing that? So they know that and then they want to keep doing it. It makes it fun. But when they get to a point where I'm going to be like, Melinda, you are so amazing. You could do this. You need to start hosting your own sneak peeks. You know this business. Hold an opportunity call. You can do this. Start doing it. You'll get there. I know okay. you will. Start working on your timeline. Okay, thanks. All right. All right, um, Heather. My team says they want to succeed, but they aren't willing to sacrifice or do what it takes. First thing, do you share the sacrifices that you have made? Because I am really good about sharing that with my team. I'm really good at sharing that with you guys, too. Um, and then it says, they do not share the same passion as I do. I'm giving them tools, but they are not implementing them. Um, so I would say for that, just continue to start sharing um, while you love this business and make sure you're sharing with them um, the sacrifices that you're making too, whether that means you are, you know, not on Facebook scrolling, you're not doing things entertaining. For me, I stopped going out with my friends. That was huge for me because that's my outlet of being crazy with my kids all week. I needed just that girl time and now I can't do that. I have to be on my couch working or watching a training video to better my team. Um, so don't be afraid to share your love for this for this business and what it's doing for you. Um, I'll see a lot of leaders who are really good about telling their coaches what to do, and then I'll go on their timeline, and I'm like, they're not doing that. What are they doing? You know, so make sure you're delivering with conviction and that you are saying, this opportunity is changing my life and not giving up on them. And they will, they will come around. Bianca was not, she was not on board with this business at all. She was like the toughest person I've ever had. And now she's a three-star qualifying coach. So sometimes it just takes time for them to develop into seeing it. Or you have to remember too, not everybody's meant to do this business. I have lost two diamonds. I've, grown, I've successfully grown five diamonds. I could be a seven, seven star qualifying diamond right now, but I lost two diamonds. It just wasn't, it wasn't the right time for them in their lives for this. So we can want it and well, we can't want it more for them. You know, um, I hope that helped. And then I will, I'll tell you, honestly, like some, the issue, I set up a team page specifically with them and I know right where they're lacking is with the personal development. Mm -hmm. They don't make the priority and, and not just from me, but I mean, corporate, our teams, all of our leaders, we all talk about it's a vital behavior. It should be a priority. Um, I think the thing that's tricky too is they work full time and I'm home with my kids. So there's there's reasons that they have that to me might sound like excuses or um, you know it's kind of like when you have a challenger and you know that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and you want to call them out with love you know right. kind of like a tough love but I I'm at a loss on on how to to build that so I would say you just listen to a call with a, with a girl who has a family and works this business full-time and still works full-time job. And you know how I get my personal development? These earbuds and this phone. I have everything on audio. When I'm on my way to my work, it's not my fun rap music that I used to listen to. Yes, I listen to rap music. Um, it is now a personal development. It's something, or it's a business call, business development. Um, I will listen to it in my shower and I take pictures. I'm not, I took a picture of my shower cap on last year and I'm like, what are you guys doing? I just worked out. I'm going to put some dry shampoo on and guess what? I'm listening to my personal development. You know, like people want to see, yes, we want them to do that, but we have to like, well, have you tried this? Um, I'm going to share my takeaways from my personal development. I'm going to share in my team page. Hey guys, I really think that this is something that you can get some value from. I read this and I wanted to share this quote with you and what it meant to me. Um, Michael Gower, he is really good about sharing personal development on his team calls. Um, my team will tell you, I will have coaches that will 
be working this business and they're getting going and then they're like, Kristen, I just don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to invite. I'm like, tell me the personal development you're using to get over this. Oh, I'm not doing that. Well, you know, um, and then one of my coach, one of my, my star qualifying coaches, we didn't really talk for two months because I told her, I was like, I can't help you anymore. There's nothing else I can do for you. Like I, I can't help you anymore. And it was, it was the personal development. So now I have her speaking to people. Yep. There she is. Katie. She's speaking to my coaches now where she's like, guys, you have to do it. You have to do this. And they, they look up to her now that they see her rank advancing. And, you know, so find people if you're developing that, um, if they find those aha moments and those people are listening to you, have them share their testimony on your team page. Like, hey, guys, I was really struggling with this. But, uh, you know, my coach told me to do this. And this is a book that I recommend. And that's why throughout this call, you guys heard me, people that I've followed. I follow uh, Anita Myron. I follow... Amy Silverman, I follow Melanie Mitro. I am following some new uprising coaches, Nikki Johnson, um, you know, Bonnie. I'm following these people who are growing because to me that's another part of development of what they're doing in their business that I can learn from. So just keep sharing. They'll come around and offer solutions for them. Working coaches, the best thing for them is audio and these earbuds. Maybe if they hit Success Club, you could send them some earbuds with a cute note saying, you know, hey, just thought of you. Um, whenever you feel down or not confident, put these earbuds in, plug in your favorite personal development audio book, and just want to let you know I'm thinking about you. You know, you like, do think of, get really creative with it. Because for me, if somebody's telling me, Kristen, you need to do this, you need to do this, because that's what they did, I just ignored them. I didn't do it. I didn't do personal development. And that's why, um, and a coach basics, Michael sent me the uh, Craig Holiday 90 days to success and I stuck it in my CD player. It's like, this is amazing. They were right. <laughs> they were right. They did it. Can I jump in? Yeah. Okay. So, the DJ? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have a question for you guys. Cause I know like one of my biggest issues was recruiting. Can you like give me a show of hands who has issues with recruiting and especially working coaches? Okay. That's what I thought. Cause I was the same way. And honestly, like I am mad at myself for not starting to actually recruit a lot earlier than what I did. This is something Melanie has taught me and I never really did it consistently until recently. And let me tell you, it is the biggest game changer in my business. Like before when I was recruiting like eh, seven, seven people a month, seven coaches a month, 90% of them were discount coaches. So literally I would have like maybe one or two working coaches. And now when I'm recruiting 15 coaches a month and eight of them are working coaches, it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And that's when your coaches are going to be hitting success club because you have a bigger ratio. You're getting more coaches started, right? You have a better chance of getting them to hit success club, you know, getting them to rank advance and start growing their own business. But how I did that is by consistently for a week straight, every single day, post something about the coaching opportunity every day, making it a different time and about a different topic of why you love the coaching opportunity. I, now I want to see another show of hands. Who has consistently for seven days in a row posted about a coaching opportunity every single day for seven days in a row? Bianca. That's why she's three star qualifying. <laughs> All right. And I, and I'm not trying to like embarrass anyone or anything, but that is exactly how I was too. I wasn't consistently doing it for seven days in a row. Why? Because I'm like, I'm going to annoy people about it. They're going to think it's, you know, a scheme. It's multi-level marketing. You know, you're just trying to get people in for their money, but that's not what it's about guys. As long as you can believe in yourself and believe that what you're sharing with people and you know, the great opportunities that you have could benefit other people that's all you have to do. Just believe in yourself and know that it's going to work if you stay consistent. Seven days in a row, every single day, post something different about what coaching has done for you, what it's done for your family, how it's changed you on the inside, how it's changed you on the outside, physically, financially, it doesn't matter. But talk about it different times of the day. So, you know, Monday, if you post in the evening, Tuesday, post something in the morning. Get all of your audience to see it and allow them to connect with you because someone in the evening, you know, on Monday isn't going to see it Tuesday in the morning when they're working, but that person who's working evening shifts 
will not see it on Monday night, but they'll see it Tuesday morning. So try to like find something that works best for you. But I really, guys, I challenge you do it seven days in a row and just post about everything that it's done for you and how it's changed you and be creative with your post. And think back to that, to that morning breakfast that I had guys with those people who are, they were sitting in poverty and Beachbody changed their life. That's what I think about. I'm so fearless about this because I have helped so many women have financial gains in in their, to to put groceries, to, to buy groceries for their kids or to buy diapers or to buy, you know, like, Those things, that is the most fulfilling thing to me, knowing you guys have that same ability to do that for somebody. So for me, I, the question was, how often do I invite? I invite at least 10 coaches a month to work the business, and then five of them, I look for challengers. I am strictly going after the business opportunity coaches, and I do that because last year, I was just trying to find challengers to, to try to convert. But there's three ways. I told you guys, there's three ways to, to recruit people to the coaching opportunity. One, converting challengers into coaches. There is Kelly Graves has a really good document that I'm going to post for you guys in the Rising Stars of how you can follow up with your challengers and almost prep them to kind of be coaches for like three weeks. It's really good. I really like it. So I'll post that. Second one, just like Deidre said, what is the lifestyle of beach body coaching? We like don't we didn't even know each other and we like all love each other. We're all like a sisterhood. Um, you know, different things like that of what it's doing for you. I'm a better person because of this team and because of these girls. I was I was not in a good place before. And then also the business opportunity, you know, the financial aspect. People people want to know that they can do this. I'm telling you guys, I didn't think I could do this. And I can do this. You can do it too. Whether you're leading one person or a full troop, you have to take the steps to develop into that leader first. You have to be willing to do things that you're not doing in your business right now to get there. So self-evaluation and having a be honest talk with yourself. I do this a lot. Or I'll call a friend and say, I need you to be honest with me. Like, what am I not doing or what do I need to do? And things that I'm like, well, I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to think outside the box right now. I really don't want to go find a training call to help me. That's laziness. And I had to tell myself I had to stop doing that because I wanted this business the same way you guys want it or you wouldn't be on this call. So thank you guys for getting on. I'm going to post those documents. Does anybody have anything else they want to add? I I hope that Yay. (laughs) Sorry. Kate had a, she did a little post and it says it's hard when my husband doesn't. Guys, stop. When my husband doesn't want me to share financial situation, even groceries for the first month. Kate, look at all the other coaches who have shared it. Use us. You have so many coaches to use. Use your upline coach. Use any of us. If we share it, I mean, this is coming from me. If I'm sharing something, it's to anybody. Anyone can use my stuff if I'm putting it in public. Um, So if you can't at the moment – that's okay. Keep working on him. Maybe he'll come around. Some of them do, some of them don't. And if not, just ask to use somebody else's. We are all willing to help you and to make it happen so you can share with others the opportunity that they have to be yeah. successful. And I don't ever, guys, out of respect for my husband and my coach sneak peeks, I only share the income potential from my first business center. I don't share everything because to him, that's very like sensitive. He doesn't want our business out there like that. But I am willing to share earning statements from my first business center, and I put a disclaimer on there, and I share that with people. And, you know, if I could add something to that, Kate, um, in my, I, I came into this business, and I, I, we didn't need the money. It was, like, one of the things that was, like, unnecessary for us. So I didn't come in for the, for the money, and that held me back in recruiting because I felt like people wouldn't connect to me if they couldn't, you know, if they weren't looking for that. So the thing that I share is how, like, I, I'm a, I don't have to do this for the money, but I like to do it because even though my husband can support us and I don't need to work and I don't need to bring in extra money, I like my independence. Like, I like being able to put it away for them, and I like having my own, you know, like, that's the – and he's comfortable with me sharing that. It, I think it was like a male ego thing where he wanted, he didn't want people to think that he was struggling to support us. And that was a big thing for him. So the minute I took that out of the equation and I stopped talking, I didn't, you know, say, oh, we're struggling financially. We have debt, which we don't. Our house is paid off. We don't have, we don't have any kind of struggles financial. So I don't talk about that. I talk about how 
I feel really proud of myself because I have my own money and I can put, you know, I can spoil my girls. And like I, I did the post yesterday on how I took them to the toy store and I let them pick out whatever they wanted and throw it in the cart and I could pay for it. You know, those, those are the things that I share. And it, they take the toll off my husband at all. I'm not talking about him and how we're struggling financially, but I'm talking about how, what, what the money has been able to do for me. So, I don't know, just a thought. Awesome. Can I add one more thing? Yes, of course. Okay. So someone asked about when to, when they're inviting. And I know there was another post about how often, or like, do you spend as much time for me? It has changed a lot because I was, I had to invite every single day. Like I was inviting at least five to 10 people every day for the first, what year and a half of my business. Now it has changed a lot. So like last year I had success club 38, I think. I did not invite one person, not one person that month. This month, I have invited 140 freaking people. All right. So, like, it'll change. It'll go back and forth. Like, Kristen said, she does it every Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's going to be a month where, heck, you don't have to invite at all because you've built up your social media to where you already have that following. And it's just going to be on their time when it's when they're going to be ready and pop up and say, hey, you know, I'm coming back from a year ago and now they want to finally join you. But like this month, it's the cup challenge. So of course I wanted to get myself ready, but I'm also setting myself up for the next couple months. So no, I didn't have to invite 140 people, but I'm setting myself up. So hopefully next month, I'm just going to be honest. I won't have to invite anyone. I'm doing my blog posts. I'm posting on social media everywhere. My like page, Instagram, it's a different kind of inviting. So not necessarily all personal invites, but my 140 are all personal invites, not including my social media. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I want you to write down a call to action to you is I want you to write down five things that you are currently not doing in your business that you know, if you started doing it, you've heard now you've heard us say, do these things, but you haven't made those action steps yet. I want to know what action steps you're taking. I really get really excited for people who start to make changes in their business. And this is coming from somebody who understands where I was a year ago and the mindset I had and to the person I am now. And I look forward to the person that I'm going to become next year because I know there's so many more mistakes that I'm going to continue to make. There's so many failures and letdowns and disappointments and tears that are in my future. It's part of the business. But at the end of the day, I reassure myself that no matter where I am right now, I'm so thankful and humble to be able to have this with you all. And I don't know if you guys follow me on social media or not, but my brother has been missing since April 3rd of this year. I went to Cancun, um, not wanting to deal with that. So I've had a lot of blows in my life to where a lot of people said, there's no way you would, I would continue doing what you're doing, but this team is what keeps me going. My business is what keeps me going and it keeps my head afloat. And that is a constant reminder of how much my life has changed because of this opportunity and how much it can change your lives, no matter what your why is and what you can do for your teams. Knowing at the end of the day, I have helped change lives both physically and financially and spiritually. Um, that is something that I know God gave me a purpose for and to sh continue sharing my, my journey and my vision and my passion. And I want you guys to do the same. You have so much to offer. So don't ever be afraid to share a potential that you can give the world. It, it, it deserves to be shared. You guys have that power. So remember that. And I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you so much for getting on the call and hearing what I have to say. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put it in the group. Um, if we're not friends on Facebook, send me a friend request. Send, you know, Bianca, Deidre, Katie, go ahead and, you know, friend request and look at what everybody else is doing. Follow them to the point where you can get what you want and then unfollow them if it's starting to bother you or you're starting to compare. That's my, that's my tip of the day. So I love you guys. Have a great day.